Those choices are usually the ones students pick. They like to be a little antagonistic to each other when they're doing the projects. Um, so you have most of what you probably need to do your projects. You can do member predator prey, uh, parasite host, um, two competitors. You can do um, a twist on the competitor species. Um, but you can, of course, do two mutualists. So we'll start this today. Um, and then you'll have that as an option to think about as well um, as you start thinking about your projects on this weekend. Right, so mutualisms. Okay, this is the first one and really the only one, right? So this is a pair, just like all the other ones have been a pair, right? Mutualisms and commensalisms. Okay. So our pair this time is anything that has some kind of positive interaction. Okay, so mutualism is going to be when both species benefit. And the commensalism is going to be when one species benefits. Okay, and the key here is nobody is hurt. Okay, so remember with predator, right, one was uh, benefiting and one was harmed. Okay, and then in competition, both were harmed. So this is the first one we've seen where basically nobody is getting harmed out of the deal. Okay, so there's lots of examples of this. Okay, I have a, one or a couple up here. Okay, we can think of like the algae that exist in like the water, the sea slugs, right? We've all seen real sexy pictures of this. The algae get protection and some nutrients from being inside the sea slugs. So they're benefiting that way. Okay, and the sea slug, as a trade-off, is actually getting some of the energy created from the photosynthesis from that algae. Plus, they get to look really cool, which is obviously something they're thinking about. Okay, the one I have up here, of course, is talking about the association with plants and some kind of fungi. Like, you might think about like mycorrhizal fungi sitting on the roots. Hey, Dr. J is particularly partial to this one. You've heard about this one. Okay, so this one's much smaller. Um, but so what we want to think about is first, what kinds of positive interactions might we expect? And we're going to look at both mutualism and commensalism here. Um, commensalism is a little less common, but still exists. And then we're going to look at a topic probably next week uh, about serving your own interests. And so as you might imagine, while mutualisms are great and all, right, it's very difficult to keep them in balance. Okay. So what happens when one partner in the mutualism gets a little selfish and what keeps these relationships in check or what happens when your relationship gets toxic and then of course we'll end talking about let's try to broaden this out and start enveloping a couple of other concepts like we've been doing okay so what can we expect from a positive interaction okay so ultimately Positive interactions come down to the idea of facilitation, okay? meaning I'm helping you do something or you're helping me do something, right? So like in our slug example, right, I'm helping the algae by protecting it. It's helping me by feeding me, right? So it's, we're facilitating each other. Well, there's ways. So remember I said there's two different ways this works. A true mutualism, okay, which means both of the organisms in the relationship are benefiting. And that's all of the, that's, that's all of the examples that we've talked about so far. Okay. 
The other one is commensalism. Okay, meaning that one individual in the relationship is getting a benefit, but the other one is net indifferent. Right, could live their life and not care that that other individual is there. Right, so we might think of something under commensalism. I can help you kind of picture this one. Like a remora riding on a shark. Okay, they're not hurting the shark or helping it. Okay, they're not taking parasites or anything. So the shark doesn't really care that it's there. It's too small to make a difference. Okay, but the remora is getting a free ride. It's like a taxi service. So they're getting to save energy as they're moving through the open water. Pretty lit. Okay, if you had me in Bio 130, right, I always like to use the example of large animals like rhinoceri, okay, trouncing through the tall grass on the savanna. Okay, and they're being ridden by small birds. Okay, so the rhinoceri are not affected by the presence of the birds in any way, shape, or form. Okay, but as the big animals trounce along, right, they kick up a whole bunch of insects out of these grasses, and the birds easy feast. Okay, so the birds here are benefiting from basically being groupies. Okay, so these are commensal relationships, right? Someone is benefiting, but the other individual, and that's what the zero is reflecting here, is unharmed, indifferent. Okay, now, note that there can be a cost in doing this. And we'll have some examples of this when we start talking about serving your own interests. We'll start breaking apart. What does it cost to be in a relationship? And we can kind of think about this when we think about the word relationship, right? There's a cost to work with someone else. Okay, so if we think about our sea slug example, okay, there's a cost, right? So if I'm keeping algae inside my body, there's a cost to that, right? It's heavier having them inside me. Right, it's probably costing me to maintain right, that sort of like perfect bacteria algae balance. Right, it's costing me the nutrients loss to feed that algae. Because those aren't going to my body tissues. Right, slightly parasitic in that way. Okay, but the key here is that the net effect is positive. I'm gaining so much from my relationship that whatever I'm giving here makes it worth it, right? So in that case, the amount of energy that I'm getting, that they're giving to me from their photosynthesis, makes whatever I'm giving to them worth it. Okay? Like installing solar panels on my house. The upfront cost stinks, okay? but I'm getting enough off of it that it's worth it. I'm not actually going to go through this, but this will allow me to have this up in the recording. So if you guys want to reference this while you're thinking this weekend, then you have it as a very good resource. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you had that. I was literally just about to circle that and say that that's the teacher's question, which you guys don't do, so I'm in a good space today. So... <laughs> I think we're out of uh, bio 130, guys. Um, that's it. Otherwise, I will start on this slide as well on Monday, so don't feel panicked. Um, I just wanted to make sure if you were choosing um, mutualism that you would have some examples to work from. 
um, in the recording that I have posted. Um, otherwise, we will start here. We'll start talking about examples and some more specific adaptations when we get into class on Monday. Um, do remember that I moved the Journal Club. We will still do it, and we will be doing it on Wednesday. So it will be a good study for the exam since it's really focused on invasives and things like that. It's like a lionfish thing. Okay, please have a fabulous day and weekend. And if anything comes up, please don't hesitate to email me.